Shout out to Supersonic X because I'm trying to get him to 1k subscribers. So anyway, let's start the video. If you haven't read Lord of the Flies, you're probably gonna have to in school one day. Let me give you an abridged version of when that time eventually this. comes. The Lord of the Flies is a book about a bunch of little British boys who got marooned on a deserted island, and the book tells the story about what the boys do to survive the elements, but also themselves. Within like a week on the island, the boys devolve into complete savages, covering themselves in face paint and killing a pig. -y. I said too much. And when I read the book in high school, this, I thought that the boys turned himself? savage so quickly wasn't all that accurate. As a former young boy myself, I was insulted that William Golding thought that us little boys were so heartless. But then I remembered all the things that happened at my scout camp, Camp Geronimo, and I realized that Lord of the Flies is still inaccurate. The boys would have gone savage way faster. Listen, I'm a cautious to person themselves. when I'm hanging around the guys. In PE, the, the other boys would be playing this game called Quarters, where you would fling quarters at people's knuckles until they bled. But I wouldn't play that game because it's dangerous and I'm a loser. Or when I was at a party and someone wanted to play the knife game to show off how good their hand-eye coordination was, I wouldn't play that game either because I needed my hands to draw. But something about being Anime with animations the guys and in the too. middle of the woods, I would live on the edge. Every summer, our troop stayed at this camp called Camp Geronimo, named after the Apache Indian who was the first person to yell Geronimo while doing a sick backflip into his pool. One oh, time, so me and a couple other boys, I don't remember who guy. started okay. it, but we were playing with matches, and okay, I know what you're thinking, but nothing bad happened, matches? okay? We just accidentally lit some dried bushes on fire and it got somewhat out of control, but it's okay, it's fine, okay? We told the scoutmaster that there was a loose fire spreading faster than we could put it out, and he got everyone in the troop to stomp on it, and we never got in trouble. Well, I was saying, I didn't have water matches? Oh, we were just lighting them and throwing them at each other. Anyway, about 30 other scout troops so attended you're Camp not Geronimo, and we would spend not a whole a week sleeping in tents and earning merit badges. Most of the camp honestly out. felt like school, but outside. Like, when you got to the camp, you were given a schedule of classes, and for the next seven days, you would go to those classes and learn and fill out packets and sometimes even have homework. Which probably helped us not devolve into savages. I mean, sure, the so classes weren't as boring as English or geometry. Like school. Geronimo's classes were wilderness survival, kayaking, or bear self-defense. Earning a merit badge required two things. I mean, the first thing, you learning learning how to there. defend yourself. Name and point out the major parts of a kayak. Kayak. Explain to your counselor the hazards you're you know, most likely to smart. encounter while participating in kayaking activities. Bears. And the second part of the merit badge, you had to actually go out and do stuff. Capsize the okay. kayak, swim it and the paddle to the shore, and if you don't make it, the bears will get you. I never got the kayaking merit badge. You had to be at least 12 to go to Geronimo, but you could go as an 11 year old if a parent was coming with you. And at the time, my dad was a camp counselor. My birthday was May 14th, and Thank Geronimo God, was at the end of May, so I barely made the cutoff I, I as the youngest person anyway, going. Geronimo was not? a big step from spending three days at Cub Scout Day Camp to spending a week in the wilderness. What made it worse was I was going to be spending a whole week with all the mean older scouts and my dad. There was this one scout named Paul. When I was 11, he was 15. So naturally, he would pick oh, so on me and make fun of me. Ha okay. ha, I get it. I'm small, so I suck. But silver lining, That's he got she back. Said. And a couple years ago, he reached out to me. And I had been doing the whole YouTube thing for a while. He was off starting his own business. And he wanted to do some business opportunity with me. And I just said, hey, do you want to do my merch? So now he works for me. So kids, if you okay. ever have bullies, just become successful on YouTube and then hire them to sell plushies. He's actually a really good and merch guy. Merch. He gets all my stuff into these retail stores. So if you see a floof plushie at Hot Topic, you can say, thanks, Paul. Bullies really do make a difference. Anyway, self-promotion okay, aside, okay. my first year at Geronimo, I was a little bit on the very young side compared to everyone else. I was taking a class called Orienteering. The class taught us how to read the maps and use a compass. And one oh. day it was time for our class to go on a scavenger hunt thing. We were given a list of places we had to go to, and we were supposed to use our compass and count our paces to get to each specific location. Then when we got to our destination, there would be a marker somewhere, and we would have to write down what that marker was. 
There were 10 different markers that we had to find, and the course was supposed to lead us in a circle. The leader who was in charge of our group and the compass was an older scout named Paul. It wasn't the merch guy, Paul, Another but I think it would be funnier if it was. Our group set off to the first Another location. Paul. Having a compass and counting your steps isn't the most accurate way of navigation, but we weren't allowed to use and Google Maps. So. They are. When we got to the spot, we had to look around for a little bit to find the marker, but we eventually found it, and then we were off to the second location. This time, the marker was That's hard messed to find. Everything. The spot we landed on was pretty far from where the marker was. actually was. At the third location, we couldn't find the marker. But we did see this reflective sign on a tree, and we figured that's what the marker was supposed to be, so we wrote it down. At this point, I decided to grab my own compass Where? and give it a Why try. Do the my compass pointed play? in a direction that was a little bit merch? off from Paul's direction. Not by a whole lot, but just enough. But remember, Why? I was the little kid. Nothing I said mattered. Paul said things to me like, Oh, you don't know how to use a compass. I bet yours is broken. I'm never going to work for you one day. And you know what? And I believed it? him. This guy is 15 years old. Do you know how wise and experienced he is? So we yes. kept going and struggling. We used anything we found as a marker. Some piece of trash, it's a marker. Hey, this tree has an A and an M carved into a heart. Kind of weird that it's at an all boys camp. Do you think that it's a marker? Eventually, we all had to admit that we were completely Yeah, there's lost. a girl, the there's a girl near you guys. Compass, and Paul reached into his pocket, pulled out his um, compass. Unless that was, that, that was pain in there. Buzz magnets are buzz magnets, magnets that are shaped like a bullet, and you can throw them up in the air, and they make this cool buzzing sound. They sold them at oh. the camp store, so that's why Paul had them. And everyone immediately figured out why we were lost. For those of you who don't know how compasses and magnets work, I don't know either. I think it has something to do with them coming from outer space. A compass is supposed to point to the magnetic north pole, and a magnet will mess up the direction a compass is supposed to point in. Paul's compass wasn't oh. pointing to his pants the whole time. We would have been suspicious if that had happened. But because his compass was right next to a magnet, it got uncalibrated. And then we all got lost oh. in the woods and died. And that's why I don't have an orienteering merit badge. I was upset because my compass oh. probably wasn't okay, so... broken, but I didn't stand up for myself. Because I don't do that. I have more Camp Geronimo stories, like the time me and my ah, friends were zipped like guys. Don't, water don't get bullied. Lean to, and then I ran away so fast that I threw up. But I already did a video about that, and it's five years old. And it's very bad, and you're not allowed to watch it. So, the moral of this video is, just because you're young, doesn't mean you're stupid. But it Are does you mean you make bad videos on YouTube. Also, check your pockets before going orienteering. Hold up. Going orienteering. Sounds like a tongue twister. Going orienteering. Going orienteering. Going orienteering. orienteering. Well, that was my Camp Geronimo experience. It was a lot of fun. I wonder if the camps are open right now, if people would have to be quarantined inside the tents the whole time. I bet that would be pretty intense. Ah.